What's going on wrestling family? Welcome back to the channel. So this video is called why does this era of WWE feel so much better? Now if you ask me one of the biggest contributors of this era feeling better than the previous one is the storylines. The stories have been so so good from the beginning of it to the build up have been great up until the payoff that rewards us the fans for staying into the story for this amount of time. Namely one of the greatest storylines in pro wrestling history in the bloodline and leading up to one of the matches one of the greatest matches in WrestleMania history between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. And with these stories being so good, it makes those matches within the stories feel so much more important. And it's not just the bloodline stuff. It's We got one of the hottest feuds going right now between CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, and Seth Rollins. You can even talk about the stuff going on in the Judgment Day. The list goes on and on as opposed to what was happening in the previous era where certain things will happen one week and then next week it wouldn't matter or it'll happen one week or next week they'll just do something to erase it and factions and teams will come together and break up not even a month later like the Hurt Business and so many other names but this time it feels like they actually care about these factions and the creative team is actually putting their heart and soul and trying to do their best with these storylines which for me as a wrestling fan I love every second of it and I have nothing else to say but what a time to be a fan of wrestling now let me just stop marking out. Let's get into this video. One, two. 2024, the WWE is in the midst of a renaissance era with a hot product that hasn't been this good or popular since the early 2000s. For this video, we want to highlight how and why this is. From the groundwork that was laid in the years prior to the changes of leadership and the acquisition of top talent. And most of all, the complete 180 fans have witnessed when it comes to creative and overall presentation. A lot of people have called this, oh, the attitude era is back. What I have called this era is the, excuse my language, the that era. <laughs> today, we'll explain why WWE feels so much better today. The seeds for this new era were planted prior to 2022. The critically acclaimed Bloodline storyline was better than anything the WWE had produced in probably a decade. The way mm -hmm. this story was told differed greatly from how the company presented their stories for a long time. In 2024, it continues to grip audiences, as we can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> What a classic moment. So good. <laughs> The arrival of Nick Khan would prove vital in altering the landscape of the company. He played a huge role in negotiating TV rights deals, as well as bringing the product to Peacock and overseeing the sale to Endeavor. Under his leadership as WWE president, the organization has made waves to change its culture and repair the reputation damaged by the previous regime. Cody Rhodes' return at WrestleMania 38 was one of the most important moments that laid the foundations for the next era. His presentation was unchanged from his time in AEW. His promos weren't like anything in WWE at the time. Yes, I cannot physically put that title belt into my father's hands. I cannot bestow it upon the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, but I certainly can put it around the waist of the American nightmare. Rhodes' performance with a torn peck at Hell in a Cell 2022 was unprecedented. In what could have been the lowest point in my career, in what could have been the absolute worst night, in what was literal hell, I was not cynical, I was not jaded, I stood, I fought. Cody was going to be that... And that's one of the things I said when Cody came back to WWE, I told my friend before they even had their first match that having him have a feud against Seth Rollins as his first feud was an amazing idea from WWE. It was genius because Seth Rollins is just so good in the ring. He's so good on the mic. And you can't come out of a feud with Seth Rollins not benefiting from that. And I think Cody Rhodes definitely benefited from it greatly because a lot of fans didn't like Cody Rhodes because he was an AEW. I know it's the whole tribalism thing, but that's just what it was. And then I guess when they seen his attire and his entrance, that kind of won him over. But the several matches that he had with Seth Rollins started to get more respect from the fans who did not like him before. And to see him wrestle through a torn peck against Seth Rollins, that's what warmed people over for the most part. So I just want to give WWE credit for that as well true top babyface the company had been looking for since John Cena. I have to finish the, the story. story. Vince McMahon's retirement in July 2022 gave WWE a lift that it needed for quite some time. It provided a long overdue yeah. creative and talent morale boost, something that can be observed from one of the first major shows without Vince, Clash at the Castle. This was a historic, legendary event that set the tone for what was to come. It also cemented those who would be key players under the new regime. The Triple H project, so to speak, the Clash kicked off the slew of major international shows that would soon dominate the yearly pay-per-view calendar. Multiple annual overseas events at this scale was completely unprecedented in WWE. 
WWE. Coming out of Clash at the Castle, the story's being told and overall quality within Raw, SmackDown, and pay-per-view continue to improve. That was a crazy moment. Man. <laughs> that moment was so ridiculous, it was just so good. Just as they had been doing since Triple H first took over, wrestlers who were previously fired or left were brought back much to the delight of the people. This past oh year, yeah, life. that was one of the biggest things that was happening. Like everybody's favorites were coming back and, w and Triple H found ways to fit them within different storylines. That was so cool. I've, I, I lost a lot of things. Oh, I lost man. my career. RIP to break. I lost my self-confidence. I lost two people who were very, very close to me. I lost my way. I thought that everything that I'd ever done here or otherwise, I thought it was all meaningless. Nothing I ever did has mattered to anyone. I was wrong. On top of this, fans would now be rewarded for following the story and paying attention. We'd see seemingly minor mm -hmm. things happening in segments that would have bigger implications later. Something that has remained to this day. And those many backstage, those little small clues and Easter eggs in the back just told me that the creative was just like paying attention to the most smallest detail. And that just told me things had changed at that point. And man, I know I'm, I'm talking too much about this stuff, but I, I just love watching wrestling right now. It's just, it's crazy, bro. Come on, boy. Get up, boy. Mm -hmm. Resiliency. And I thought Muggs was, was reaching too hard with this one. Vince McMahon's return and as the chairman true. in early 2023 was a setback. The usual post-WrestleMania creative lull coincided with his return to power, but yeah. fans remained hopeful after Endeavor's purchase. I still don't know why Brock did Nick that. since Nikon was promoted back to being president of the company, there was more hope when WWE's parent company, TKO, announced that The Rock had become a member of the board of directors. It was just days after Rock joined the board that news would emerge which ousted Vince once and for all. Watching Raw, SmackDown, and pay-per-views now, you she can really tell freedom talent are now afforded under triple h where are you i'm here come find me dude you don't get i'm not gonna beat you up i'm oh. gonna f you up bro where the f are you <laughs> and with that comes a level of confidence and quality of work that is evident when watching and we see it now cody's going for it oh, There's plenty of performers that have been given a new lease of life under Triple H, and we're going to highlight some of those who have excelled the most, starting with LA Knight, a man who under Vince had been stripped of his persona and yep. relegated to a manager role while on the cusp of being fired. Under the game, Knight was allowed to be himself again, and this time on a big platform. And given his qualities, it was only a matter of time before the megastar got over with the WWE audience. Let me talk to you. LA Knight's everywhere, huh? You set one foot outside that ring, I'll hit you so hard, I'll knock that hair back to gray. <laughs> because while you failed over and over again, while you were busy doing suffering succotash, mm -hmm. you're the head of the table, right? You're the tribal chief, right? You're a defending champion, right? No, no. I knew Will Smith was in the game, but I didn't know Uncle Phil became a rapper. <laughs> Why he do that to top dollar? Too hot Shout out I to AJ you Francis. Five dollar haircut here. You're ready to take your school pictures. I just get the feeling you're not allowed within 50 yards of a school. You creep. <laughs> just, uh, just want to punch them first. Yeah. Here we go. Right. You can answer. Right. Right. You don't want to answer? Okay. Yeah. She look annoyed. Tell them whose game this is. Yeah. Tell them whose game this is. Yeah. With everybody saying. Yeah. Everybody saying. Hell. Hey. Night. <laughs> 2023 was the year Jey Uso finally broke off on his own. After putting in tremendous work as part of the bloodline, Jey joined Monday Night Raw to much fanfare. And I'm out too. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy moments, man. Crazy moments. Acknowledge me. <laughs> <laughs> that never gets old. A 
Over the next months, he would become one of the brand's top baby faces, aided by an immense cool factor, a breathtaking entrance, and a very popular catchphrase. Because it's just me, Oos, and made it big. Jay Uso is now in, in your, your city. city. Yes. You don't want to say this real quick. Um, for people who just started watching wrestling probably the past two, maybe three years, or, or who just got back to watching wrestling the last two, three years, I want to say this. I know a lot of people online complain about what they see on TV, and everybody has the right to voice their opinion. And they feel like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. This is the worst thing ever. But if you've been watching WWE for a long time, and most of you guys know what I'm talking about, when you talk about something being the worst of all time, if you think the stuff that's happening now is the worst you've ever seen, you would have not survived in the late 2019s when it came, or the late 2019, the late 2010s with WWE because Raw was hard to watch for three hours long. It was terrible. You wouldn't have survived at that time at all. So what's going on right now compared to what happened back then? Night and day, bro. Night and day. Yeah. One on one. Drew. <laughs> he is not amused. In recent years, Bailey had established herself as a great heel. But when cracks began to form in her damage control faction, fans knew it wouldn't be long until she would be that brilliant babyface the people got behind in NXT. It was all mm -hmm. gonna come down to the booking, and thankfully, her split from damage control was handled very well. A spectacular Royal Rumble victory led to a very good breaker bangle. Yeah. All built to Bailey getting a WrestleMania moment by becoming women's champion again. Amazing moment, man. She deserved that. I'm on a WrestleMania with The Rock, John Cena, and The Undertaker. Trish Stratus is waiting to give me a hug after winning a championship. Sounds like a movie. It sounds like dreams. Since Triple H's takeover. Yeah, I'll say this about Bailey, man. Bailey, I don't know why so many people, I guess, dislike her, but. She, I feel like she's underrated, right? I'm not saying that, you know, that she's like the number one greatest woman of all time, but I think she's a lot better than people give her credit to. And I know this video is a celebration of this era of WWE, and I'm still celebrating it. But I will say this. When it came to the tie-up of the damage control and how they broke up leading into WrestleMania, I felt like they dropped the ball a little bit. I felt like they could have gotten a lot more out of that and post WrestleMania, but now it seems like that they're trying to do something with damage control. They're figuring something out, and you know what? I'm trusting Triple H to do something great with it. But outside of that, what happened with Bailey at Royal Rumble at WrestleMania? Amazing, amazing moments that she deserved every second of it. In WWE have been hotter than Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about one without the other, given their fantastic story arc together. Rhea's presence was the motivation Dominic needed to turn on his father. He went from a white meat baby face to a despised, ungrateful white heel meat. that turned his back on family to a line with the Judgment Day. Rise with the Judgment Day or continue to fall alongside your father. It was this version of the faction that made it a highlight of TV every week, mainly so we could see what Dom and Rhea were going to get up to, but also to see how the brilliant feud with the Mysterios developed. I'm not your baby boy anymore. I'm a man. And I <laughs> made him into a man. Mom? Shut up! Ain't no way I would have said that in kayfabe. She would have knocked me out, scripted or not. Mommy's always right. Exactly. Mommy's always right. Just like mommy's always on top. It could be my dumb dumb. <laughs> While Dominic became one of the best heels on the show. Like I was saying, I decided not to show aggression towards my dad. I can't. thought they were pumping in that noise i didn't realize how loud it actually was when you were out here Ripley <laughs> was the dominant top star of the women's division Liv morgan's addition to the story just added further layers she'd previously been injured by Rhea. <laughs> 
So what better oh, way to get it. revenge on mommy than to put her on the shelf and try to steal her boyfriend on top of that? It was the type of storytelling fans had been crying out for in the years prior. I don't think that a gorgeous man like you should be with a girl that makes you call her mommy. You love that text I sent you, right? Let me get this for you. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh. Yeah, you got caught thump, trying to thump thighs, bro. Gunther's dominance under Triple H brought prestige back to the Intercontinental Championship. The Ring mm -hmm. General became the type of heel we weren't used to seeing in WWE. His record-breaking IC title reign showcased the type of wrestling that blends sport and storytelling aspects together perfectly. I want to share some words about all the legends that held this great title before. You contributed absolutely nothing. Fans <laughs> couldn't help getting emotional. Here's the thing about Gunther. And this is in no way taking it away from taking anything away from this era of WWE, nor is it taken away from Triple H. But for those who've watched NXT UK, Gunther was that guy back then too. Now, what Triple H did with him made it way better. Now, because like we've seen in the past where wrestlers come from NXT, whether it be the UK brand or the the I guess you call it the regular brand, they come to the main roster and they get fumbled. Right? We've seen that with so many great talent, like people that we thought in our mind, like. They're so talented. There's no way you can botch it, and we'll see them get botched within the first month. So I want to give Triple H credit for that, as well as Rhea Ripley. She was a star even when she was in NXT UK. Not on the level as she is now, of course not, but you can see the potential in her even back then. So they did a great job of bringing these guys over and the lady over to make them look a lot better on the main roster. She invested in Chad Gable and Sami Zayn's chase for the belt. <laughs> You can't beat Gunther. Why are you I am afraid, okay? Is that what you want to hear? I'm afraid of letting people down. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Sammy Zayn! Not to mention the subsequent feud between the two that came from their desire to be champion. Trust me, the only tears you ever want to wipe off your child's face are tears of joy. Crawl and tore the cover! Shoulders down! Sammy retains! The premier story of the Triple H era, however, is Cody Rhodes vs. Roman Reigns mm -hmm. and how the power of the fans changed the story. Cody vs. Roman had been a hit the year prior. It's not because I think I am somebody. It's because I want to be somebody. Wrestling has more than one royal family. But The Rock's inclusion in 2024 completely changed the dynamic, as well as the addition of World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins, who had been a workhorse mm -hmm. for the company, specifically in the last year. So he definitely earned a huge WrestleMania showcase as well. But when it came to the Great One, he was on the board of the company when it all came down to it. So the decision was in his hands. Plus TKO wanted him to star in the main event of the first WrestleMania under their ownership. You have an opportunity to bring this business up. You can always finish your story another time. The fan pushed back towards the Brahma Ball's involvement in Rhodes' story didn't just lead to a heel turn for The Rock, it signaled the shift to a more risque, violent story. Have him talk about our family again. Slap his teeth out of his mouth. Oh. <laughs> That's a hard slap right there. When one good story ends, an even better one begins. Biggest WrestleMania of all time, biggest tag match of all time, we accept. Rock was already bulletproof, but now as a member of the board, he had even more control to influence the show without PG restrictions. But there was a method to the blood and swearing, since it acted as the seasoning for an already compelling thriller of a storyline. Uh, uh, this is what happens when you fuck with the final boss. There's so kids, Rocky. And then it stops. <laughs> that. There's nothing that the final boss can't say. Can't. Ooh. The finish to the story couldn't have been any sweeter. The entire WrestleMania weekend plus the post-match celebrations from night two was the perfect illustration of the new era. Three. What a good payoff, man. Here's the thing that's Finally. so impressive about this is that although the entire story of the bloodline was so good, 
it could have been botched at any moment with any mistake. And I know that for a fact because, again, we saw some things that were going on in the late 2000, 2010s where there were some things that started off so good, but somehow they got botched and it ruined everything. So the fact that they were able to cross that tightrope and make the story more compelling as time went on and, and even with the changes due to the fans uh, going online and, and complaining about what's going on, it's masterful, bro. It's ma what a time to be alive. Pro wrestling was cool again. Cody's story wasn't the only one of its kind being told on WWE TV. Drew McIntyre's mm -hmm. quest to be world champion dates back to 2020 when he actually won the title, but there was an asterisk next to his title reign since he never held a belt in front of fans. Then, after being screwed out of the title at Clash of the Castle, he slowly became someone that was done with it all. Perhaps Drew the final so straw was right seeing now. CM Punk return in 2023 to seemingly move Drew further down the pecking order. McIntyre, future shot! I prayed for this and it happened. It set the stage for another epic story that also utilized real life issues, social media, and edgy storytelling. <laughs> so good, man. In all fairness, I really don't think I could be objectively fair with these two tips. So. <laughs> it resulted in a spectacular WrestleMania that closed one chapter and began another. And the other thing I and the other thing I appreciate too, just really quick, sorry guys, is when you brought when you when WWE brought back these people like CM Punk or The Rock or whoever else. If this was during the Vince McMahon era, if well Vince wouldn't have had CM Punk come back anyways. But let's just speak hypothetically. If Vince really liked CM Punk like that, these individuals would have came in, got a title match, got a title reign. But instead, CM Punk, The Rock, these legends, they came in and contributed to the story that's already being told and playing their role really well, and they fit in these stories seamlessly. That's just, it's just, I love seeing stuff like that. I love seeing legends come in and just doing their thing this way, as opposed to just taking every title that they see. It's, it's so good, man. Be the champion, McIntyre! To quote a great man, you never throw rocks at a man with a machine gun. I'm right here, you little bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I dream broken dreams. I make them come true, mate. And tomorrow night, I'm gonna make them for you. Oh my God! Oh, best in the world. In that ring, even at commentary, on the microphone, now a referee. Nobody can touch me. He said he prayed for it. Now I'm gonna pray on him, and he's never gonna ever be a champion here as long as I live. That ain't true. And he's been standing on that. Amongst all these stories and beyond, what we have here is the closest thing we've seen to the Attitude Era. Not when it comes to the product, but in terms of business as well. Business is the biggest metric to show us how wrestling really is cool again. We've already spoken about the sale to TKO, and then our multiple yearly international premium live events, such as the European shows which are accompanied by a live Smackdown and numerous house shows that just like the US events, are packed to the rafters. Fans just can't get enough, as seen from the boisterous crowd reactions, particularly on overseas shows. One of the greatest crowds of all time, man. The WWE enjoyed 18 <laughs> consecutive and AJ that in the run up during that time 40, which just goes to show how hot the product has been across 2023 and 24. On the show, the commentators would inform us of the company's continued growth. All the while, we got the impression the announcers were loving their work and enjoying the show. Just like mm -hmm. the wrestlers, the announcers were given the freedom to perform their craft with far less handcuffs and restrictions. It benefited the stories being told and the overall product as a whole. Pat McAfee was a big star joining the broadcast team in 2021. This meant he could be himself, otherwise he wouldn't have agreed to come in. His infectious energy rubbed off on his partner, Michael Cole. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat McAfee here with us at ringside. <laughs> Corey, I'm not McAfee. I can't get up on the table. I'm too old, but I can still eat here at ringside. This is actually Michael Cole's birthday today. No, I hate when people do that. Let me know it's my birthday and that's it. Leave me alone. Then in 2022, we'd get to see a Cole that wasn't overproduced with someone constantly in his ear. Oh, and a cheap shot by Mysterio. What is that? I 
don't know if they have this already, but if they do, great. If they don't, they need to have a channel with all the greatest moments from Michael Cole. WWE, this, you should do this. Pay me 10% of it. I don't mind. But you should have a channel when all the biggest moments so far in the past probably decade and just show Michael Cole's reaction while seeing that match at the same time. I think that would be an interesting video for people to watch. I mean, personally, I would love to watch that. They should do that, man. <laughs> and The Rock sold that spear. Plus, neither announcer had to worry about mentioning he had the craziest terms anymore. Diarrhea it was easy to tell how much fun Pat and Cole were having. Tables in Philadelphia. Oh, we got picnic tables? Well, hey, boo-boo, here comes Yogi Bear with a picnic table. <laughs> and also, we have on the panel with us tonight, the man who the internet wrestling marks used to make headlines. The oh. Is that Ken Shamrock? No, it's Solo Sokoa <laughs> eating chair shots. <laughs> and WWE women I didn't catch it. Rhea Ripley Before. with who? A month away from her battle with Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. Other improvements include the commentators running down the card to start the show whilst in or by the ring, and McAfee's Bobby Heenan style analysis using a telestrator. Man, you got antler juice all over you. The Vikings lost, and now you're trending as a guy that maybe. Yeah, I feel like Bobby Heenan is so underrated. He doesn't get mentioned, and I get that it's an era way before so many people who watch wrestling right now. But Bobby, Bobby Heenan. And Gorilla Monsoon, man. Those are two commentators that I feel like don't get enough flowers for what they've done. They were amazing. Amazing. Go look them up if you don't know. There's some weird stuff. No! He said, get in my belly! Stereo! <laughs> Caught red-handed. Maybe enjoy it. Live more. Get a little... There's lust in your eyes. She is straddling that man. You know what that means? <laughs> I do, but I don't know if we can talk about it live on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> a lot more of gazing on another part of his body. Oh, there's another two. We'll also highlight Samantha Irvine's fantastic yes. ring introductions. She's been given the freedom to provide unique intros for countless wrestlers. This is something previous ring announcers were discouraged from doing by the higher-ups. So to see Samantha being allowed to shine is a welcome addition to the show. <laughs> She's so good, man. I don't understand the hate. I really don't. You said her name right. If Samantha Urban just said her name right, I would like to hear it that way. Chelsea Green. Okay. No. Now touch on how the show has visually improved from a production standpoint. Kevin Dunn was WWE's head of TV production that is for over true. 20 years. He was also Vince McMahon's right hand man. Especially the, the backstage camera thing they've been doing with the the one shot going from the backstage all the way to the entrance ramp. I've been loving that. Some people say it's been done too much. If it's done right and and very sparingly, it's so effective. But Hopefully they don't get into a point where they do it every single time for every single wrestler, which they have it. But in the situations and in the uh, backstage situations, like when they had that big fight and Becky Lynch is walking through there and she walked all the way to the entrance and the camera followed her all the way there. I feel like it was very effective when they did it that way. So once Vince left, it was only a matter of time before Dunn was gone too. Under Dunn, the television product had looked the same for years. And within that time, yeah. many of Kevin's production tropes really got under fans' skin. Yeah, and that's and that's so annoying. Even in movies, when you're watching a fight, so many cuts, it just gets to the point where it just takes you right out of the action. So keeping it at a one shot always works. And I remember at one point in time, they tried to make SmackDown a little different and they tried to do like the swooping cameras to make it have like a sports like feel and it didn't work. But again, that's a testament to what they're doing right now and how effective it is now. Get 
Yeah. These are Vessies. They also make these fantastic waterproof shoes. Not water resistant, or not water resistant. Oh, yeah. Wow. That is the terrible. The change was the perfect opportunity to freshen up the show's appearance. The improvements that followed greatly enhanced the viewing experience. There it was it a is. complete night and day difference compared to before. Dunn's replacement was ESPN's former vice president of production, Lee Fitting. The improvements were evident Lee immediately, Fitting. as Fitting gave WWE a more sports-like presentation, doing so by filming wrestlers when they arrive at the arena. It's like they do in the NBA before the game, but it's, I like it. The transitions to commercials showcase special graphics unique to the wrestler on camera at the time. That's so cool, man. You might not like it, but I like that they're trying to do something different. I like it, man. After returning from break, long continuous shots were utilized. A first round matchup in the King of the Ring tournament. Gunther versus Sheamus, as physical as we expected. This is Friday Night Smackdown on Fox, and we are witnessing one on one action stacked up. Stratton on top. We would see the camera follow the wrestler. And the man has come around to Columbus. And she's come here looking for a fight. One scene would seamlessly blend into the next. Where's the article? Underway. The appearance of the ring and stage area benefited from a more stripped back appearance, shifting our complete focus to the action with darker colors lit around the ring as opposed to bright LED screens. Not to mention the excellent use of overhead shots. Now on the announce table, Kobe Kingston in trouble. Gunther now going to turn it into a Boston crab. A Boston crab on the announce table. Ricochet flies. That was perfect. <laughs> the sports like feel we just spoke about can also be seen during the pre and post shows WWE put on during the weekend of premium live events. The kickoff events whet yeah. fans' appetite and build excitement for the big show as wrestlers bounce off the crowd, cutting promos in a loose and free environment. Hey, 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 I'm just glad I got to get in Canada. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love Jay so much. He's hilarious. Man, that is so nasty. That's how a pandemic gets started. The post-game shows run like a sports press conference, as the talent who just competed give their thoughts on the event and their performance while taking questions from the media. We are the best. I, this isn't a promo. I'm not, you know, I didn't look in the mirror in the shower and come up with this stuff. This is as real as it gets. In the and although I do like these press conferences, you know, Obviously, it's copy from sports, but they were kind of they were they were doing this already in like New Japan and in like AEW and which pretty much got it from New Japan. So it wasn't a new concept to me, but it does work so well for WWE. So I love the fact that they were able to make it look more professional as opposed to like New Japan. The guys would be sweating, slapping their titles all over the table, drinking out of just plastic Dixie cups, which is cool. It feels a lot more grounded. But for this type of professional environment to give off this live sports feel, it fits really, really well man i beat tonight his dad told me that 10 years ago everybody uh. acknowledge me uh. who did that leave i'm serious the lady with the glasses get her out get her out or i'm leaving you, you feel me like for real <laughs> do you feel him sir <laughs> yeah. drunk jay appreciate him though man but man come <gasps> <laughs> 
Nobody told us we were doing the presser. So the, so the bus is sponsored by Wheatley Vodka. It's sponsored. Triple H is often the highlight of these presses, with the game giving a fascinating insight into his creative process and also fighting off some tough questions. I love that. Fightful and PW Insider reported that Ooh, Drew Gulak yeah. was released by WWE. If you're going to cite news sources, pick good ones. That's oh my start. god, that was crazy. Really, maybe. I feel like I'm on the main event of one of those seven hour pay per views where you're just like, please get the thing over with. Don't read into that, Jesus. <laughs> And that's the other thing, guys. You guys remember when the pay-per-views were like seven, eight hours long, bro. It felt like you were on, on a whole shift at work with no lunch break, especially watching WrestleMania. Oh, my. I don't even know how we did it. It being shortened down to two nights at WrestleMania and some of these pay-per-views being shortened down to five matches. It's been so good, man. It did so good for my weekend. Because to watch one pay-per-view, that means my whole day was gone. You know what I'm saying? So, it, it, it you know what? I love this era, bro. I love this era. I met one of ours. I was in main events of stuff that went six, seven hours, dreading having to go out there to a silence, right? Just calm down. They're also Under tired. Under the leadership of Triple H, WWE is in its renaissance era. Our world here in professional wrestling, uh, it is a new era. It is a new time. Yeah! It is a new era. It's a new day. At long last, the power is back, and professional wrestling is cool again. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out... Yeah, man. <sighs> Watching this video just... Gave me the, f I just, I'm just so excited once again about wrestling. And I already have been, but just watching this just, just reminds you of how good we have it right now. And for all the people that just complain about everything, fine, do your thing. But for me, I'm going to love, I'm going to enjoy every second and every part of this ride in this era of wrestling because you never know when it's going to stop or if it does stop, when we'll ever get an era like this again, man. We got it so good right now. We really do. Especially for us who live in the States. Bro, we got it. We got it so good. We got we we get multiple shows in our country that other other countries only get one every two years, one every three years, and yet we're complaining on a weekly basis about the most smallest thing that would have been. You know, some of the stuff that we complain about that small that small nowadays would have been the best thing that happened probably five six years ago. <laughs> that would have been a classic moment five or six years ago. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite part about this era of wrestling, and specifically in WWE, what, was, what is your favorite storyline, whether it's your favorite match, whether it's your favorite wrestlers, whether it's whoever. Just let, it, let me know in the comment section because I would love to see each and every one of you guys. Let's spread some positivity about this era. Thank you guys so much for watching. Salute. Peace. Have a good day.